a Let's Stay Together show with Reverend Ricardo McCain and author Brenda McCain, helping you to rebuild your relationships with God. My God, my God, my God. We need to have a show called How to Stop Breaking Items in the, in the, in the studio. You are just tearing things up. We already owe them a $1,000 for all the stuff you didn't broke now. <laughs> hey, you know, uh, we're, we're right back. I hope you enjoyed that sermon. Uh, one of the reasons why we have uh, some ministry on here, because this is a religious show, and so we want people to know that, you know, how this show works is God is the head of the show. And so we have an awesome pastor that we go to church with, Reverend uh, Dr. Felder, who was preaching those words. And so I want you all to listen to that because I hope that somehow it will bring somebody closer to Jesus Christ as we do on these topics as well. So we're right back on our show. We're talking about I like him, but how many kids, what is the limit? And we were talking uh, when we left out about the government situation with people uh, having, um, you know, getting government assistance and being concerned about it. And Walter brought up something very good about how that system was first designed. But one of the biggest issues that I see a lot of times is that people are just afraid. They they, they have this income. And, and, and the crazy thing about it is that, you know, um, government assistance is just is, is, is astronomical. Some places give you almost like $34,000, which absolutely makes no sense to me where uh, you you know how I'm not going to turn down government assistance, and I'm going to get a nine dollar job, you know, and I get thirty four thousand dollars in certain locations. Like Wisconsin was just fighting about this because they figured that there's too much money they're giving to assistance. I've got an idea on that. I'll talk about it in another show. But the problem that I see, you know, is that people are afraid that if I get in that relationship and that government assistance is removed. That person may not be around. I mean, you know, right now statistics show that marriages are ending at almost like 60 percent. And and even uh, people who are religious is at more than 50 something percent. So there's a fear factor that I looked at happens a lot of times where that person is concerned about if that person will be there for the long haul that I might lose this assistance, or if I try to get back on it again, how difficult did that be? So, Leslie, are you still there? Talk to me a little bit about that. You know, this is a difficult, it's a difficult subject, a difficult thing to talk about. Um, You know, I think communication lines have to be open and and healthy. And I think when you talk about the divorce rate, the big, the big factor there is lack of effective and healthy communication. So if you're concerned about, um, you know, I guess losing certain, financial help that you receive, those are conversations that you need to have with somebody um, about where you want to take the relationship and, you know, why, you know, why you might be hesitant to uh, fully commit to a relationship or to get married. Um, But I think it's also important to recognize why those systems are in place, like we were talking about earlier. And um, we're living in hard times. I mean, it's one thing if, if you're either, you know, if you're middle class you don't have enough money to really uh, have the support that you need. So it's like you've got to be making a lot of money or you need to be getting some, some, some assistance. So it's hard to be middle class. It's hard to kind of be in that middle line. But I think it comes down to, you know, kind of what your long-term goals are, kind of what kind of values that you stand for. If that's something that you, that you want to hold on to that you don't want to, to get rid of, then those are conversations that you need to have with whoever you're dating. Just be honest about that. You, you know, it's real interesting that you're talking about government assistant. But I remember reading my divorce decree, and in there it also indicated my money would change if I lived or married another man. So it's not just public assistance or or, oh, or oh, break that down. Uh, and you know, and I wish I could uh, uh, remember off the top of my head, but there was a clause in there, something that was right. said about my financial situation for child support changing if I were to live with an unrelated man right. or get married again. Yeah. I've seen it. And, and, and the government, you know. And it they, made a difference. Yeah, they, it, it does make a difference because it's a fear factor because the government will sit there like, hey, well, if he's making, you know, a certain X amount of dollars, we're we going to cut this off. And, you know, you live in there with him, that's almost like, you know, common law. And so they're, they're going to be, they're, you know, they want to keep an eye on that. Now, you wonder how do they do that, but. Mm-hmm. 
uh, you know, somehow or another, you know, they find out some nosy neighbor said something. I don't know, but they found it out or, or somehow. Or he could have just went back to court and said, you know what, she's married mm-hmm. now. Her financial situation has but changed. But those are still his children that he needs to be Yeah, but that has nothing to do with the government. Mm-hmm. That's I get right. it. Yeah, that, I mean, because to do with think the about it this way, no matter what his financial situation is, he's, he, he could be living with someone and have... They could have 10 kids together, but he still has to pay me what he has to pay me. Right. This is the government's part of oh, what absolutely. they don't want to pay. Yeah. And there's pros and cons to all of this. The government gives it to you not because they want to give it to you. There's mandates out there. And there, there are people who are addicted to drugs, they're addicted to alcohol, addicted to sex, and addicted to aid. Aid. Yeah, aid. Financial aid. Oh, yeah, okay. Financial aid, yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. And so, um, uh, so when you get addicted to this thing, then it becomes a part of your life, and it's hard for you to come out of it. Right. It's a, it's a set, it's a system of bondage in a sense. It really is. Uh, you look at the movie, the the show that everybody likes to watch called Empire. Okay. Now you look at the 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 the, um, the star on Empire, the one that owns the record label. What what's its name? Lucius. Lucius. Uh, Lucius. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now now Lucius. But his character is, uh, what's his? What, his real what's name his is real name? Terrence Howard. Terrence Howard. Lucius. Okay, now Terrence Howard, okay, he, he has a divorce decree as well. Uh, and it's, it was, it's difficult for him because he's now making, I don't know, $100,000 per episode or what have you. And now a lot of that money is going to his ex-wife. Every time he makes more money, more money goes to his wife. So what happens is a lot of men who are in that type of situation decide not to make more money because he don't want it to go to her. Uh, and it, these things happen in, in child support situations. There's child support situations where they was just cut off altogether. He says, I'm not going to work. I'm just going to get paid under the table. Okay, and so all these things happen. And then you look at the, the, you look at the mother and says, okay, are you on this AIDS only because you want to live this life of being uh, taken care of by the government and take care of your kids at home because you don't want to work and on and on. And again, that could be a, a sense of bondage and it's something that needs to be broken. Yeah. Well, that does lead, you know, um, Go ahead. that leads to this question. What is the emotional and financial effect of dating someone with kids? Mm-hmm. And so it's like that vicious cycle that goes, Tracy, you look so frustrated. <laughs> oh, I'm like, okay. <laughs> well, Leslie, you have anything to say about that? Yes. You know, I always tell the couples that I work with um, that want children. Um, children do add stress to a, a marriage, and they deplete your finances. <laughs> so you want to prepare and expect that. A lot of people, like we were talking about earlier with marriage, you know, women being excited about the wedding day and not really thinking about the marriage. Mm -hmm. I think we do the same thing with children. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm going to have this beautiful baby. Okay, do you know how much daycare is? Mm -hmm. Um, Let's let's talk about education for our kids, the dentist, um, health care. I mean, the list goes on and on. The time spent, Mm -hmm. sleepless nights. Intimacy and date nights gone. Um, so bringing children into a relationship is definitely going to increase your stress mm-hmm. and um, and mess with your finances. And so you really need to be clear about that and pre-plan and as much as you can um, ahead of time on how you're going to handle those things, making sure that you have additional support. That's good. That's good. And get counseling. Uh, I get people who come to me a lot because I'm an elder uh, of the of the church, okay? And a lot of times what we think that because these ministers uh, have these licenses that they have the answer to a lot of our questions, and they do not. And so what I do is if there's someone coming to me about maybe trafficking, okay, they, what they, they're they calling it now. It used to be called prostitution. Now they, oh, call, it, okay. they call it human trafficking, okay? I don't know anything about human trafficking other than what I read on Google or what have you. Uh, and so if, I, if, if people come to me with these problems, I th- take them to a person like Leslie. I refer them to someone like her who lives this life every day. She counsels those people. And we have to be man enough, a woman enough to understand that we don't have all the answers. Yeah. Get, give the people to people who do this on a daily basis so that they can get the better help. Okay, mm-hmm. so some of these answers, questions we can't answer. We can give our opinions, but she's bona fide. You see what I'm saying? And I think we should have, Thank we should you. not be so prideful. Yeah. Bonafide. And, 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 and that's why we have it here. Yeah. She's our specialist, you know. Mm-hmm. So you my psychiatrist and everything else at one time or another. Yeah. But, you know, I, I will say this, you know, it says, you know, is it an emotional or financial effect on it? Uh, one of the things I want to definitely say is that we're not trying to say that kids are bad. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of times what happens is that people never look at the, you know, the overall picture of what it means to have children, especially today. 
and they love the idea that Leslie was talking about, but you have to understand the financial commitment, and it can cause a lot of emotion. Yes. You, you, you enjoy the thought process. It's a wonderful thought, but when well, you've got to do this, and then you've got to be concerned about the health of the child or mm-hmm. situations might happen or if you have to move, if you lose a job, and, and you know, how are you going to be able to take care of things? And I think we never really take the time to really uh, sit down and make the decision on if, the, if this is something we want to do and if it's the right time to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when we don't do that, it causes a lot of emotional stress on us because now with a lot of people, especially younger kids now today, they're, they're enamored with this child, of having this child, but the responsibility of taking care of them is, is very difficult. You're right. You know, and it's not that it's a, it's a bad thing, but you have to be prepared for it. You know, it's it's not something that you can just do for, you know, a couple of weeks and say, you know, okay, I'm finished with this is going to be an 18 plus year adventure that you're going to be dealing with. And so when we don't think about that whole scenario and we just have the child, it can be very emotional and the financial responsibility of it can be very difficult because you didn't foresee this. You didn't foresee that. You didn't see this. You didn't pay for that. And then you're expecting mom and dad or something like that to help you with that responsibility. And they're still trying to help you. Yes. Then along with the kids. So it can be kind of emotional and, and financially, uh, uh, you know, troublesome for people. I don't care if you're a child or an older person. It's a big responsibility. Tracy? It was something that you just said, too, that uh, was brought to my attention, that a lot of times when you're dating and you want to do things like take a trip to Hawaii, or do this or do that. And someone had brought to my attention, oh, we, you know, I want to do this, this, and this with you. And I was like, I can't. And they were like, I was like, I got kids. And a lot of times that kind of deters a person mm-hmm. from wanting to date you also. Mm-hmm. Or, or moving out of town, like, you know, let's get together and let's move out of town. I can't. Mm-hmm. I want to be where my kids are. Right. So those have been some things that have come up, not that I've really dated but those are some of the things and that's that your problem that's your fault I, it you're is. a beautiful woman it that is. should be dating somebody yes, i am uh-huh. yeah. no, I just it is. Yeah. yeah but but like you said it was difficult you know because like you said a lot of times people would say let's go away for the weekend or can you spend the night no i cannot but see that's you you i i just say toodles to you you are a great mom you said no i know a lot of women Yes. Come on, baby, I'm sorry with this table. I know a lot of women who drop their kids. We was talking about that yes. earlier. You just leave your kids with yes. anybody to be with that man to take a trip. You put your children first, and yes. a lot of people don't do that. Your life as a parent, it is on hold. Just like Leslie just said, sometimes the dating and date nights, that has to stop. Some women now, they don't stop. Right. You stop your life to raise four beautiful, successful young ladies. Some of these girls out here, I'm getting mad. So that's your fault, Tracy. That's the way they are looking. And can but I'm I ask, complimenting you. Oh, thank you. But can I ask Leslie a question? No. <laughs> right, right. Because, no, yeah, the, yeah. and the reason I'm asking, I didn't want to go off track. The reason I'm asking, because as Brenda's jokingly saying, and she may be serious, you know, I had a counselor who did say those exact words to me that, you know, you should have been dating. You should have been, you know, doing that because here you are now, all your kids are grown, all your kids are out, and you don't even know how to date. And I don't. So, you know, tell that, as, as Rick always says, tell that single mom out there with the four kids, how do I am you loving go these about people dating? My, still in my <laughs> stuff here, boy. Jeez, man. I'm telling you. So I think that it's really important um, when we talk about um, everybody has a story, right? Yeah. So we really need to understand, okay, we all have patterns of dating, um, we all sometimes look back at some of the men or the women we date and say, okay, how do I always end up with this this type of person? And, and what do I want to do that's different? So, you know, counseling is a great way to kind of self-reflect, figure out what these reoccurring themes are, really be able to work on yourself. And if it's not going to come through individual counseling, maybe, you know, there's groups that you can get involved with or going to the church um, praying more, getting into the word, and really understanding who you are as a person. Um, and then through that process, being very careful about who you date and where you meet people and what what they're bringing to the table. You know, not just looking at the outside, but really looking at the inside, 
taking your time to get to know that person. It's important also to get some support around you. If you've got family around you, uh, you know, a mother or a cousin or a brother or sister that you can sometimes drop your kids off with that you feel comfortable, then, you know, that's fine. 